Hi everyone, Mr. T back again from sunny Dominican Republic. This time we're going to cover a topic that I think you all enjoy, which is our pets. Now if you want to get your pets out of your home country into Dominican Republic, what's involved? Or if you want to acquire pets down here, what's involved? That's what this video is about. So let's get started. The first couple we're going to see is a Canadian couple who's just been here a short while. Here we go. Everyone, I'm here with Herman. And what's this lady's name? He's uh, Rocky. Oh, th this is a he. This is Rocky. And we're with Steve and Linda, who recently came over from Canada. Welcome to DR. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is about bringing in dogs. So this little fella is as Dominican as he comes. And this is your Canadian dog, yeah? Yes. Herman. So what did it take to bring Herman into Dominican Republic? It, it, it was a bit costly. Uh, they said uh, in Air Canada, the, the measurements of the cage, you got to be careful because they say it has to be so much higher than the dog and so much that the dog can turn around. So we did the measurements of Herman and did exactly that. But once at the airport when we were going to check him in, mm -hmm. they thought the cage was going to be too tall. So that's very important to remember that uh, to get the, the exact height that they allow. Mm -hmm. uh, because then you'll be stuck at the airport with your dog with the decision of either going back to get a new cage. Now, uh, I am sure if I would have had him in a, a, in a cage that was a bit shorter mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not as wide, they didn't even look if he could move around or do, they were more concerned of the height. So... Um, but you got him through. We got him through, yes. He was 70 pounds right on, so... Yep. Yes. So uh, it was okay, it was a bit of a scare at first, but... Uh, they yeah. put him on the plane and he was waiting for us uh, and the other airport, Punta Cana, when we got there. And, uh, we thought but it was like, the same flight as you guys? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, it they told us. Twice. I mean, we didn't actually see them put him on our plane, but either way, he was there when we went walking through the airport. All of a sudden, there's there's our cage with our dog and the cage is on top of the cat. So sitting there waiting for us. Um, oh, here comes a coconut from the oh. palm tree there. Yeah, he thinks yeah. that's his toys. He, well, it certainly he is. He doesn't know that coconuts are not balls. That one's dripping with uh, fresh cocoa water. So yes. that... uh, the Dominican, uh, it's not, um, you don't have to get every shot. Uh, all they uh, require is the rabies. Mm -hmm. But for us, for our best interest of uh, our animals, we uh, gave them the whole gambit, which uh, paid off at the end because a lot of these mosquitoes and uh, could spread disease. So I would suggest, even though you don't have to do it, mm -hmm. it's not required for them in the country. For me, I would, I would request, I would do it because there is a lot of disease and the mm -hmm. animals here that we've seen okay. have had these diseases. Uh, for cats so what exactly dogs. did he get? When you go see the vet, they'll tell you. Okay, so um, you go and see your Canadian vet Yes. If you're from Canada or yes. your respective Wherever, country. Uh, go see the vet to say that they're able to go and travel. Mm. You can only be 10 days before. You can't go three months before and get all the paperwork. Mm. It's 10 days before. They have to sign a few papers mm -hmm. that say that they can travel. Um, uh, in Canada, we had to go to the uh, mm -hmm. food and drug uh and they had to uh, get in contact with our vet. Mm -hmm. And our vet, we had to bring back the paperwork to right. say that yes, they can travel. This is only 10 days before you can do the flight. So you have to be really prepared. We ended up with a few problems because uh, we didn't know we had to go see the Food and Drug Administration. So when we were told that by the vet and the airport, we rushed and we spoke to the Food and Drug and they didn't have to do this, but they helped us out and they talked directly to the vet and they usually don't do that. So mm -hmm. you have to be really, really prepared. Um, if that's in Canada. Mm -hmm. So uh, food and drug, anything that you, have, you export, it has to go through them. Okay. Um, your vet gives them the right bill of health. 
Now, people will say, all you need is one little piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Yeah. When you're traveling to another country and you're moving there, you got to tell your vet, you need that paper for the Food and Drug Administration. That is what you need. Sure. Just back to the airport. So uh, how uh, easy was it to claim your dog when you finally came to? It was came? very easy. It was right there. Yeah, just go they were like the super. Right and uh, I would suggest if you do, do a direct flight that the animal's not put someplace uh, and then put on another plane and then put on another plane. Try to get a direct flight. Direct flight. Uh, yeah. I know uh, Canada Airlines, um, you can put your animal under your seat. Mm -hmm. It has to fit a, a certain measurement. So if you have a small chihuahua and that, you can bring them on the, but those are only direct. Direct yeah. flights do that. And do you They're know how many kilograms maximum? No, it Before doesn't you matter can't the weight take it as under long the... as it fits in that. But it also counts as your carry-on. We had uh, the one cat with us, and the other two cats, they were all calm. Herman was calm. They were just, um, they were well treated. Uh, yep. It was very easy to go claim them. Okay, and was it all the same paperwork as well for the cats? Yes, the paperwork, exactly the same. As for dogs? As for the dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and again, here... Okay, we just got to uh, have a little bit of play. Yeah. Action in here. <laughs> He's like, oh, coconuts, coconuts are the best toys right this moment, anyway. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he's got a, a coconut in the pool. Yeah, he's, but yeah, he's, yeah, trying, yeah, he's trying to. He'll he's be trying to fish enough it. to try to get it. Yeah, we gotta just go over and get a shot of this. He may go mm -hmm. in the pool now. Oh, oh damn! No. It's like Ice Age where the where yeah, the <laughs> nut floats <laughs> yeah. away from him. Yeah, you <laughs> poor thing. He'll, he'll yeah. do that for. Uh, when you move, uh, like in the fall, you got to remember your animals, especially for me, if you're with a cold country, their fur, winter fur, will come in. So when they get here, their fur is still coming in, and he was very, very, very hot. He's still losing a lot of his winter fur right now, mm -hmm. but it still comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just nature. Yep. So I'm hoping next year he's not going to go through all this yep. heat. Hey, so, sure. I remember when you leave that 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 still happens. Excellent information. Well, thank you so much. And uh, anybody watching this should be able to highly benefit from that, especially if you're from Canada. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, you you're here to stay for good. Yes. yes. Yeah. We are. Well, we're open to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So far, you enjoy it. Yeah, so far. Yeah, You've so been here how many months? Since uh, September. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All the best. Traveling with your pet can be challenging if you don't know the rules. Since each country has their own regulations and restrictions, then prior to booking a ticket, call your airline for up-to-date information on your country. Also, prior to booking the tickets, find out the cost difference between transporting your animal within the passenger cabin with you, if permitted, compared to having your pet in a crate in the cargo hull. Make your reservation early because some airlines restrict the number of pets that can be carried on a single flight. Prior to arrival you'll need to get a health certificate issued and signed by a licensed veterinarian in your home country. The certificate should be made in English or in Spanish and issued no more than 10 days before travel. The certificate needs to contain the name and address of the owner and complete identification of the animal example name, breed, sex and age. Make sure it's certified by the agricultural department of your state and apostilled by the state government. For example, if your pet is traveling from the United States, the certificate must be stamped by your particular state's USDA office. And if your pet is traveling from Canada, the certificate is stamped by the local CFIA office. Within 30 days prior to departure, have your pet examined and have it cleared to be free of any infectious diseases and treated for any external or internal parasites. Your pet also needs to be vaccinated against rabies. The rabies vaccine certificate should include date of vaccination, established period of immunity, product name and serial number. Your pet must be vaccinated for rabies between 30 days and 12 months prior to entering Dominican Republic. 
The Dominican Republic does not accept what they call three-year vaccines. So your animal, even if it has a three-year vaccine, must be revaccinated if it is more than one year since it had the last vaccination. Other vaccinations required is DHPP, which is distemper, adenovirus, parainfluenza, and parvovirus. And pets will not be subjected to quarantine on arrival to DR if the above requirements are met. Also, a blood titer test is required to enter the DR from high rabies countries. And you can check the link under the video for more information. Dominican Republic does not require that your pet is identified with a microchip. And an import permit is not required when it comes to bringing a personal pet into DR. And up to five personal pets can actually be imported to the DR without an import permit. The Dominican Republic does not publish a list of banned breeds, so all breeds are welcome. With the exception of guide dogs, all pets must be transported in specific carriers or plastic kennels. Upon arrival in the DR, ask to speak to the animal control official at the airport who will review your veterinary certificate and fill in the official pet entry permission form. You'll pay 10 US dollars for that paper and you're free to go with your doggy. Three days before you leave the DR, you'll need to get another official health certificate from a Dominican veterinarian. And when you leave, it's the same process as during entry. You go to the animal health office at the airport, you pay 10 US dollars, get another paper, and then you go to check your dog in for departure. There's also an embargo on shipping animals that are too big for the cabin. This restriction usually kicks in after May the 15th and lasts until about September. And that's due to temperature restrictions. So be aware of that when you plan your vacation. Everyone, I'm here with a German dog called Schroeder. Very cute and owner, Thomas. Thanks for being on camera. Now, you. Thomas, you wanted your baby out of uh, Germany, you and your wife. So to get Schroeder out, it became a bit complicated. Yes, it wasn't easy because the airlines uh, don't uh, take dogs with, uh, with short noses. The pugs, yeah, yeah the flat pugs, nose. Yes, pugs and the bulldogs, uh, French bulldogs and so on and uh, no airline wants to take him on board in the cargo on board yes you flew to uh, miami was it yes with pet air the company calls pet air and they are transporting uh, animals and all kinds of dogs yeah. and um, it's with lufthansa cargo mm -hmm. but uh, we had to fly over miami not directly to puerto plata the problem was from Miami to Puerto Plata. There was no airline who wants uh, to Again, to take the pug. Yeah. Yes. It takes the pug. And, um, so you found a small aircraft. Yes. And a friend, I can book uh, a small airplane with a, with a prop. Yeah. And um, it was a one-man show for him. Yeah. But there was you, the pilot, and Schroeder. Yes. Yeah, and, and two you pilots, uh, pilot and, and the co-pilot, uh, okay. and me and Schroeder, uh, and we uh, started in Miami. Yeah, and um, four hours later we were in Puerto Plata. Just like that. It was a little bit expensive, but uh, it was no option to leave him in, in Germany. No, because you are a baby. Yeah, that's right. And he's lucky. Uh, he likes this. Yeah. The sea and the beach. Good stuff. Yes. Well. Welcome to you all down here, and uh, where there's a will, there's a way, yeah. and you found the way. So, uh, any paperwork that was it difficult to get the paperwork sorted out to to do uh, all this? No, the paperwork that, that all is done uh, done from uh, from Pet Air. From Pet Air. Yes. So there you go, guys and girls. You can look up Pet Air, and they are where located where? It's yep. a German company in Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, okay. Mm -hmm. But in, others, in, in other nations and in other locations, there are uh, companies with, with other names. Right, okay, good stuff. So uh, enjoy your day, and he is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> All right, thanks, Thomas.
Thank you. I just want to say sorry for my English. <laughs> okay, no worries. Down here, we have to feel very sorry about my Spanish and uh, many other gringo <laughs> Spanish. Yeah. So uh, it's all, okay. all good. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye. Everyone, I'm here actually at a Freedom Lovers event with Iris, Ira, Mira, Mira? Mira. and Atuk. Peter. Yes. And the dog? Atuk. 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 And you've just traveled from, uh, was it Central America? Yes. We and came from Paraguay to the uh, Dominican Republic. Okay. And uh, that was a bit difficult with the dog coming here, yes, wasn't it? Traveling uh, in South America is very difficult with dogs because they are not a um, personal item like you come from, from Germany and you have your dog with you. Um, it's more uh, a luggage and they they just they want to shove it into send, a crate. Send dogs or other pets um, and it, it's very expensive and you have to, to travel um, on special days so it's not sure then you can travel uh, yeah. at the same day as the dog travels. Okay so it's very awkward and what advice would you give to uh, anybody who's gonna travel across the world now with a dog? Start very early to look what uh, the different uh, airlines and different countries want uh, or used to, to, to have um, as uh, specialities. That's why we're making this documentary as well, so people get some ideas what to start preparing and uh, what's needed. Anyway, so you're in Dominican Republic and uh, w once, you, once you arrived here, how fast could you get your hands on your dog? Um, that was very fast. Yeah? Yeah. And how's the dog enjoying it here? Yeah, he, he likes it very much here. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he's, he's over under the table. So uh, he's tired. <laughs> oh, and here's a pug. I got to get the pug in. Sorry, I had to do a quickie here. We've got other dogs in the house. Yeah, this is a cutie. This is Schroeder, and your dog is uh, comfortable over under the chair there. So thank you very much, guys, for being on camera and uh, happy ongoing travels. Be back soon. <laughs> thank you. I'm here with three very energetic dogs, and here's one of the owners, Craig. Thanks for being on camera. Anytime. We don't have Catherine here. She's just out and about at the moment. But uh, tell me a little bit about your dog experiences. And uh, you had to import some to start we, with? We had originally came over here with Diego and another female American Bulldog named Cha Cha. And that was about uh, 2014 we did that. And uh, bringing them over uh, was not a big deal at the time because they were registered as emotional support dogs. And it was very easy to uh, bring them over and there was no hiccups and it was seamless. They just sat in, uh, at our feet on the plane and mm -hmm. flew over. Uh, obviously, we had to get them vaccinated and get a medical, um, a medical pass from a vet veterinarian in the United States. But um, it was pretty seamless and pretty easy. Do you think it's harder today? Possibly. Uh, I mean, crating, I know, uh, may be difficult for some dogs and who aren't used to it. Uh, and uh, I know there are some restrictions with um, um, crating dogs that certain certain breeds of dogs who are brachiocephalic that have a pushed in muzzle yep. in, the, in the heat of the summer. Um, but these guys had no issues. They travel well and they just um, slept at our feet for the flight. And then when we got off the plane, they just kind of did their thing. They did what dogs do. Yeah. So you've had a, a litter or two of puppies? Uh, we've had two litters. Wait, three litters of puppies uh, with Diego and another female that came over. And unfortunately, the female um, died of poisoning a week after giving birth. Uh, so the last litter of puppies uh, we hand fed. They all lived. Uh, we sold all the puppies except Chuck, or excuse me, Sweetie. We kept her. Obviously, got her fixed because we don't want any inbreeding. And about a, two years later, uh, Dookie. He ran off somewhere. He came back to us because he was a little bit too much of a handful for the for the person who bought him. Right. So now we have three dogs. Now you have three dogs. Nice. And you mentioned poisoning. Can you just elaborate? Do they do that a lot down here? It happens. I would say. I mean, any any type of poisoning like that, I think, is just uh, happens. If one time is too much. So uh, yeah. it's a. It wasn't a very. Uh, it was a very traumatic and uh, sad death, and we we miss Cha Cha greatly. 
uh, but she left us with um, with some wonderful puppies. Yeah. And there's puppies all over the island now uh, that are having puppies of their own. Um, so Punta Cana, here on the North Coast, Santo Domingo, all over. Um, there's uh, Diego and Chacho's line is, is still carrying Racing. on. Racing, yeah. On. I know from the veterinarian you can get some kind of uh, injection. So mm -hmm. if somebody throws a piece of poisonous meat over mm -hmm. the fence, and you see them frothing by the mouth, you can quickly inject them and, and often save their life. Too. It's true. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we took Cha-Cha to the vet three different times and she was misdiagnosed each time because she had just given birth. They thought it was complications with the, the birth. And so they didn't even look at the poisoning aspect of it and until it was too late. And then mm -hmm. they said, oh, she's, she's dying from poisoning. And then I was like, well, I've been here three times already. Um, why wasn't this caught before? Um, but it is what it is, and uh, you know, um, I would say uh, dogs can live a very happy and uh, long life out here, and um, unfortunately, sometimes that can be cut short. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great place to have dogs, uh, a lot of freedom for dogs. Uh, that being said, there are a lot of dogs that are off leash, that are roaming the streets, um, that can sometimes depending on how they react towards each other. It can be aggressive or it can be just, you know, easy going. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, it's, a, it's a nice dog-friendly island. Island. It does yeah. get a little hot in the summertime, so some dog breed, breeds uh, may not be uh, adapted to that heat, uh, but most dogs can find a little dip in the pool or find a place under the AC or a fan, and uh, they'll be just fine. Yeah, great. Well, one final thing I just wanted to add. If you ever get chased by a dog and you're on a motorbike or a push bike, the dogs are very much like hunters. I find if you stop and you give them a stern kind of stare, then they kind of stop in their track and just walk yeah. away. Yes. Yes. Where if you act scared and you keep riding, then uh, they often chase after you and you might get a bite in the leg. Oh, there's yeah. a full on chase yeah, on here. They're going for it. Yeah, um, that's, that's it's, it's good. Very, yeah, it's very true. Um, the dogs out here, have been on the, a lot of a lot of the, the breeds that you see here on the island, island have been here for many many generations, and they um, they're pretty submissive towards people if you let them know that you're the boss. Yeah. Um, I, and I haven't seen too many neighborhood stray dogs that are people aggressive. Sometimes you're right; they will chase you and they will nip at your feet as you drive by. But I think that's more of a chase reaction. And like with exactly what you said, if you stop and you yell no or yell at them, generally speaking, they back off. Yeah. And um, I have uh, had dogs chase me on the moto and, you know, just yell at them and they, they kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. business. Yeah. I find them actually less aggressive down here than I've seen in some countries because Definitely. they have more space and they live pretty good lives most of them. Yeah, I would say, you know, in general, uh, dogs are treated pretty well out here on the island and they, um, they, you know, they, you see some healthy dogs in the, in the barrios, in the streets, and they don't look abused or malnourished. And, you know, obviously sometimes you see some sick dogs. Um, but uh, most, in general, I don't think that they're um, overly abusive towards the animals out here in the DR. Right. Well, this uh, dog here, he, what's his name? This is Sweetie. Oh, that's the girl? That's the female. Oh, very and active. Then, yeah. uh, Diego is the father, and then Dukey back here is Sweetie's brother. Yeah. yeah. This uh, lady, she likes a good run and a chase. like a good run. And yeah. we uh, exercise our dogs quite often. Catherine, my wife, she'll walk them in the morning or go with a run with them. And in the afternoons, I take them for a bike ride. So I'll ride my bike and I'll have them on a leash and they'll, they can run faster than I can pedal. So uh, <laughs> they, they are very, uh, very strong, energetic, active dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for all your wisdom here and uh, adding your uh, little doggy family to the video yes no problem anytime and uh yeah bring your dog to the dr they'll have a good time great thanks great <laughs> all right cheers yeah. yeah i just wanted to mention one thing if you are a dog lover and you don't necessarily have to bring your dog over here from the states if you don't have one uh, there's plenty of dogs that are in need of a home uh, they're very affectionate they're very appreciative um, a lot of the times the dogs will find you and adopt you and um, they'll they'll take you as a family member versus you having to go out and find one because there are a lot of dogs that are just in the street that do need homes and that would really love to mm -hmm. find a loving family yep. so um, and, and if you just put the word out I mean I put yep. the word out not long ago and I got a little pit bull uh, and they had her 
stuck on top of a second floor flat roof in the sun, just a little bit of yeah. shade some of the day. Uh, and she wasn't getting exercise, wasn't getting love, wasn't getting the right food, missing half her fur, and now she looks fantastic. And they were just, there was a young guy, just eager about having a pit bull, yeah, but he, he knew he couldn't take care of it, mm -hmm. so he, he let go of it. I threw him a bit of money uh, yeah. for his uh, expenses he had had, uh -huh. and um, boom, she's now a fantastic a dog. Yeah. yeah, a new lease on life. That's and and awesome. she, she's got a better home, and... Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can save a life, that's sure. better than uh, yeah. than feeding the puppy trade. Sometimes exactly. you see down here, they come walking yeah. with a cardboard box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if they sell them, then they will try to breed more. Yes. Where yes. there's all these rescue dogs, as mm -hmm. you say, that are needing a home. So course, course, why not yeah. get one of those? Yeah. I mean, dogs that are in need of a home that would just absolutely be so happy to find a new loving home. So that's, mm -hmm. a, that's an option as well if you don't bring your own dog over. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Oh. Cheers. Here on the North Coast, there's a number of animal rescue organizations, and they're mostly run by foreigners who rescue abandoned animals and give them all the necessary medical treatments. By going to such shelters, you'll definitely help change an animal's life for the better and bring a lot of joy to your own life. So I hope that's the way you're going to go. Here's a few names of the local rescue places. Dr. Alexis Mission, and you've got Dogs and Cats of the DR, also called DCDR, and Coconut Hound Haven. Everyone, I'm here with Sandra from Germany originally, correct? Yeah, correct. And Sandra, she's got a uh, bunch of lovely dogs. There's one just here. There's a few that's going to come in and out of the camera angle here. Uh, Sandra, so could you tell the viewers how you can help them if they come down here in terms of acquiring a nice dog and uh, uh, what sort of uh, vaccinations, etc. the dogs have had? Mm -hmm. This is here in Dominican Republic are a lot of street dogs and they really asking for help. With me, I, I was not um, looking for a dog. They came to me and it's very, very important to vaccinate them for Pavo, um, hepatitis, uh, leptospirosis. Now nobody's here, but uh, they are all puppies, and it has to be really done very um, early because <clears throat> this life here is a little bit more rough, and also the climate is bringing out this uh, more than in our um, countries. The dogs are very lovely here, and. Um, <laughs> You don't see this, but in the background, they're all chewing on things. Well, I'll and just swing the camera down. This little fella is busy so, chewing on some yeah. kind of rag there. Yeah, this is yeah. Molly, and she's adopted in Germany yeah. already. Somebody dumped her in front of my uh, gate. Um, because uh, the people here that I'm um, working with the dogs, and that I'm healing the dogs, and that I'm helping the dogs, um, normally I do this with... Um, uh, humans but when the animals are here why why shouldn't I and um, yeah I think the the most important thing is really um, to help also um, the birth control here um, there are a lot of foundations like the DCDR or um, uh, Alexandra Gergens, she's from Germany. A lot of people, they really, really do a lot for the, um, for the pets here, not only for dogs, also for cats. And um, they try to help this country not be overloaded with uh, puppies because um, the Dominicans itself, they, they are like, okay, live or die. If you live, it's good. If you die, it's life with us. I think Europeans or West, West people, they're having other thoughts about this. They bond more and um, they really care for their animals. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really good help also to help the foundations to, to have their uh, free clinics for the people. They can come and spay and neuter clinics. And it's almost every month and uh, it would be great if you people also can help <clears throat> um, to really um, control the birth 
here and help the animals with this because there's not enough food, the, a lot of sicknesses and so on and um, they are living in the campos and um, nobody's not really taking care of it, you know. Well done to you for doing everything that you're doing and have done and uh, I would like uh, right now we'll put some contact details so uh, if you need a nice doggy she has some real beauties here. There's uh, another one behind me here, chewing on a bone, I think. And uh, you have currently seven dogs available. I have currently seven dogs, but uh, three of them are mine. <laughs> but they can contact you and see what you might have yeah. at that yeah. particular yeah. moment. Yes, and I also know a lot of people, they have dogs, they are looking for forever homes and really uh, like to, to be adopted. Very good, <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much, Sandra, and um, your contact details have already been placed on the screen here. So if you need a nice little dog, contact Sandra and uh, I'm sure you'll figure it all out from there. Yes. Thank you. Thank Take you care. So I'm just at another property here where two of those dogs from Sandra's place have got their new home here and a big palm leaf has become their new toy for a moment. And folks, up in El Choco, which is one of the roads that go up from Sasua, there's an animal place up here. It's like a shelter. It's actually a huge area behind everything that I'm showing you here. Behind these buildings, there's big areas where dogs have kennels and they can run around at night time. They go on shifts for running out in a big open area, They're even building a pool right now. So I'm just going to step on the road and give you an idea. But here you can obtain against a donation uh, one or more dogs. Uh, the owner here, her name is Miriam. So if you uh, come up the El Choco Road. It's just past the Casa Linda second entrance and you'll find this up on the left. So this is a country road and if I just swing the camera around it goes up further to Hacienda El Choco. So this is a big dog farm with hundreds of dogs. They take in rescue dogs. I even delivered one that was just thrown on the side of the road one day in our villa area and I took it here and they took it over and took care of it and told me it's doing good so uh, yeah try that out too if you want to acquire a dog in this hotel here Kaoba in Cabaretta which is right next to Pearl Bikini clothing store close to the uh, main center here here you can find little doggies that are looking for a good home Hotel Kaoba asked for a guy called Michel and he has dogs that need rescuing Alright folks, we're nearly finished with this documentary. Thanks for watching to this point. I just quickly want to cover about my services. If you're coming down here on a vacation and you want it to be safe, fun and pack in as much action as you can, or you're moving down here and you have doubts about how to go about a lot of things, then I offer general consultancy. I also have 14 mini courses that covers everything from immigration, finding love, uh, buying motorbikes and cars and much more but instead of rattling them all off here send me an email to info at educatedtraveler.info and I'll send you two price plans where you can study it all and from there you can get back to me and let me know what you're keen on learning about and we can set up a video call which is either telegram whatsapp or skype or we can meet face to face when you get down here there's different options. All right, thanks for watching again. Take care and see you next time.